Floyd Mayweather's exhibition fight went from bad to worse when both fighters were warned for using abusive language, and when the ref had had enough, he stopped the fight early. But this is where the real chaos was just getting started. And when everyone thought it was over, more fights kicked off outside the ring while Mayweather's team urged the fans to leave for their own safety. And Clarissa Shields had the privilege to witness the brawl ringside. Talking of unplanned violence, Conor McGregor has gone viral once again, this time by hitting the Miami Heat mascot a little harder than planned. The mascot was dragged off the court by three people and later reported taken to the emergency room for treatment. Dana White is confused why this is becoming a trend. I saw the Deontay Wilder one too. What's up with mascots wanting to get punched in the face by professional fighters? <laughs> what do you expect? I wouldn't have professional fighters punching me in the face if I was a mascot. Doesn't seem like the brightest thing in the world. And on the Wayne in podcast, Josh and John doubt if the hospital treatment was due to McGregor punching too hard. Connor knocked out a mascot. And he really I'm did. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys a video here. Jeez. See, now this was all set up. But I think Connor took it a little bit beyond what they thought. He didn't pull punches quite the way he's supposed to. This is a set up thing. And he, he hurt the dude. I know. I already went to the hospital, gave him some pain meds. I mean, yeah. I wonder, is it the punch that hit him or is it when he fell backwards and hit his head? That's what I want to know. Because it, there's just too much of a beak in that front part. <laughs> I don't I don't think. I don't. Yeah, see, like that. Not, he doesn't have a beak. He's fire. He's Bernie. Whatever. He's the heat mask. <laughs> it looks like a beak. I mean. You got to be careful. I mean, yeah, well, can can this guy? I don't guy... think. Look, Con Connor did not mean to hurt the guy. Oh, absolutely not. You know, he's just trying to play out the things like they wanted. I think he got. I think what happened is the guy Connor extended, and the guy got that shot. Not so much, you know, fist, but it rattled his cage, and he went back, and he got hurt. Now he nah. knew he was he was going to be going down, but I think that's where. He got hurt. I don't think the second one on the on the beak, as you would say, he doesn't have a beak. He's got a whatever a muzzle. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, I feel bad for the guy, but you know, it's, it's what happens. You get paid to take the shots, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've got a great idea. We got a great idea. We're gonna have Conor McGregor at the fight. We're gonna have him punch you, <laughs> punch our mascot. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. Can you, can you imagine being talked into that? You know that guy's uh, never fought hey, in his life. He's no. He's like, you know, oh, Conor's gonna pull the punches. You don't have to worry. <laughs> he's getting, he's getting drug off the court. Going. Uh. And Con Conor's Conor's like probably three or four proper whiskeys deep. Oh yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, He's definitely deep. Oh, it. geez, man. Jeez. And after Charles Oliveira's big knockout win against Benil Darius at UFC 289, Dana White wants the Islam rematch next. Let's not play games. That fight makes sense. That's the fight that should happen, and, and I'm excited to see it again. And Islam's coach, Javier Mendez, reveals his thoughts on the win and if Islam would even be willing to fight Oliveira for a second time. I didn't know who was going to win, but I was crossing my fingers it was going to be Benil. 
I for sure did not think Charles was going to be that impressive in victory. I didn't think he was going to be able to do it like he did. I feel that in my opinion, Charles has earned the right to be number one in line for it. What the UFC feels is different, but from what I see, I don't see how it isn't Oliveira. Do I think he's done enough? Yeah, I think he has. I seriously doubt Islam's gonna refuse whoever they offer, so whoever they offer, they're gonna offer. Honestly, I know I did want Benil because I felt he was being disrespected, just like Bilal Muhammad. I think the same thing about him. I think he needs to take his shot. But it is what it is. I'm not the one running the UFC. Also fighting at UFC 289 was flyweight fighter Miranda Maverick, awesome name by the way, who was victim to a decision loss. However, that wasn't her main concern that night. Some things are scarier than fighting, and one of those things is going blind. My left eye went blurry end of second round and was completely blind throughout the third round. It's mostly back now and I'll be meeting with a retina specialist this coming week, but I'll admit I was scared during that time. Still, I firmly believe in taking ownership and responsibility for my ups and downs. It wasn't my night. Jasmine did great in there and capitalised on my hesitations and poor shots today. Congratulations and all respect to her. Sorry to all those I disappointed and thank you to those who don't let 15 minutes of my life represent who I am. I'll be back. Canada Vancouver is a beautiful city and I'm happy to have met the UFC crowd out here. And as a thank you for watching this far, here's a professional golfer getting tackled by the security who thought he was a threat. Oh!